I'm Michael Burroughs. I'm Acting Associate Director of the Rock Ethics Institute and Senior Lecturer of Philosophy at Penn State University. And I'm here with Dr. Sue Knight, uh, who is the 2015 uh, Richard B. Lippin Lecturer in Ethics. So Dr. Knight, very much, thank you very much for coming to Penn State and welcome to the Rock Ethics Institute. Thank you very much, Michael. Thank you for having me. I'm really uh, delighted to be here um, to get to talk to you and your colleagues. So um, we wanted to talk to you just a bit about your, your work and your background and uh, some of your current curriculum, curricular development. Um, but for our audience in general, I'm wondering if you can say a bit about what philosophy for children is. Uh, that's, a, that's a large question, but let's mm -hmm. say someone who doesn't mm -hmm. really know anything mm -hmm. about P4C. Um, how would you describe it? What are some basic things you would say about it? Okay, well, well it's clearly got to do with um, teaching philosophy to children and um, uh, philosophical questions are uh, what you know we might call big questions. Um, questions like, um, is there a God? Uh, do we have free will? Um, how do we work out what's right and wrong? So they're questions which have um, no ready-made answers, but which, um, in which children are um, often very interested, especially young children. And um, in philosophy with children, we try to work with the uh, intuitive ideas children have and the questions they have and help them uh, develop their thinking further, uh, both their thinking skills and their ideas about uh, those kinds of big uh, human questions. And can you talk to us about how you became interested in doing philosophical work <coughs> with children? Uh, well, it really came from my own experience uh, doing philosophy. Um, I remember when I first started university, um, I got into philosophy by chance because I needed to find a, a fourth subject to study and um, my advisor said, oh, well, uh, just do philosophy. And uh, I didn't even know what it was. And uh, I went and bought the textbook, which was uh, a, a book on, um, I think it was a book on uh, ethics, actually. And I, I remember reading the first, uh, the introduction, and I thought, oh, this is amazing. I've never come across anything like this. And and I, um, it just somehow opened a whole new world to me. Um, I realised as I as I kept going with it uh, through the years how um, my whole worldview had changed. My thinking was so much clearer, and uh, I couldn't imagine uh, not having had that experience. And it struck me that uh, all. All people should have that experience, um, just because it was such a world. I don't think it was just me. I think most people who've been through through a philosophy uh, course would uh, say the same. And uh, it's something that I think all all children and all um, people should have the opportunity to um, engage in. In, in. in addition to that, the important uh, philosophical experience that you want to provide access to, are there? Are there particular aspects or some aspects <coughs> do you think from an <coughs> education standpoint <coughs> that you feel like philosophy um, can importantly contribute uh, for yeah. childhood education? Mm. Philosophy um, has to do with reasoning, that the basis of philosophy is, is reasoning, the giving and uh, um, the giving of reasons and uh, the critique of uh, other people's reasons and um, really to um, what, what a democratic society needs is people who can reason well um, and the individual needs that as well. Uh, so I think that that's one aspect. Uh, in, in order to, um, to learn, uh, we need to be able to reason well. Uh, so I think that's one aspect of philosophy that is really important for everyone. Um, and the other one is, I guess, uh, moral education. Um, um, sort of acting um, not only uh, selfishly but um, you know in the interests of others as well and uh, we have a, a very long you know, there's a very long uh, history of um, moral philosophy you know two and a half thousand years where people have uh, you know some of the best minds that have ever ever lived have uh, tried to work out how to tell the difference between right and wrong um, and how to reason ethically. And I think that is enormously important, again, 
for individuals and for society as a whole. And so uh, in that mm. moral philosophy regard, can you talk to us a bit about um, primary ethics and your role in primary mm -hmm. ethics? Yeah, well, primary ethics is a not-for-profit organisation um, based in New South Wales in Australia. Um, and it's been charged with the responsibility of uh, producing an ethics curriculum for uh, grades K to 6 um, as an alternative to religious education, which still has a place in public schools, in new government schools in uh, New South Wales. Um, and I was asked to write the curriculum, uh, which you know, as I said, spans K to six. Um, yeah, so what the curriculum aims to do is to um, encourage students to engage in reasoned ethical uh, decision making. Uh, so to um, give them the skills and dispositions to um, think about um, ethical issues, which are, you know, at the appropriate kind of stage for them. So <coughs> questions about uh, for young children, uh, whether it's okay to um, tell, tell a friend's secret, uh, whether it's okay to lie to get out of trouble, uh, whether they should stand up for, uh, for someone who's being bullied, um, those sorts of questions, um, which I think are uh, important for children's lives and, um, you know, for, for the good of society itself. That's helpful. No, thanks. Um, I was wondering if <coughs> you could talk a bit about how you think about <coughs> the curriculum differently, say, for a kindergarten or year <coughs> one student as opposed to like a year six or seven student. Like, how do you, I mean, <coughs> you want to discuss ethical issues with all different <coughs> ages. Um, mm. So, like, how do you approach those age groups differently? Like, what are some ways you think about that? Yeah. Well, for a start, we have to um, look at what the empirical research tells us about uh, the development of, ch of children at different ages. So, for example, if I'm going to, uh, if I'm interested in doing a topic on stereotyping, uh, then I will have to look and see at what age children uh, recognise that they're, they are the victim of stereotyping, at what age they um, begin to stereotype themselves. Um, and then I will have to think about, uh, I will have to think about how to, um, how to present the, t the topic of stereotyping in a way which is not, which is going to uh, be accessible to those children, but also that is, is not going to have the effect of singling out children in the class. Um, in every class will be someone, a child who is stereotyped. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, and there'll be stereotypers which, which people will kind of recognise, other members of the class will recognise. And so that has to be avoided. So for young children, I usually use um, animals as characters in, and I'll uh, write a story about uh, animals, uh, <coughs> about the wombats who, who think that uh, bilbies are uh, talking about Australian animals here, um, are all fearful and uh, cowardly custards or, um, and the, the bilbies think the wombats are, are slow and lazy. Um, and I will try and um, raise issues about stereotyping uh, through, through those sort of means. Mm. Do, do you think that <coughs> the, I mean, the future of philosophical work with children or philosophy for children. Um, <coughs> as far as moving this work forward, do you think a, a big part of that should focus on curriculum development um, or other areas? <coughs> I, think, I think curriculum development is, is what's sorely needed. I mean, more so than, than other things. I think without, curri without a curriculum, uh, it's very hard to... Um, it's very hard to show people what, what it's like. And I mean, it seems to be a bit crazy for everyone who wants to do something about philosophy for children or with children to uh, have to 
write their own curriculum. It, it doesn't seem to be very... Um, it's taken me four years to uh, write this curriculum and it seems to me that... And, and I'd be... I would really like someone else to sort of, um, you know, have a go at Im improving the... <coughs> excuse me, the sort of stuff I've done. Um, but it just seems mad to start from scratch all the time. Um, I mean, you know, I mean, scientists don't do that. They work on um, on the basis of other people's work. And uh, I think it's without the curric without having a go at a curriculum, um, we've got to start somewhere. And uh, I just think, yeah, curriculum work is is absolutely uh, what we need. Um, Thanks very much for spending time with us and talking with us about your, your work. And we're all looking forward to your lecture uh, tomorrow night. Thank you, Michael. I'm looking forward to it too. And thanks again for inviting me.